ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله تسالون به ولا ارحم ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدع وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد الم انشنز ان القران so acts of those who know the scripture if you know not another ayat Allah mentions all you who believe who be Allah who be the messenger and those from amongst the muslims who are in authority and if you define anything amongst yourselves refer to Allah and his messenger if you believe in Allah and the last day that is better and more suitable for final determination the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the superiority of the scholar over the worshiper is like the superiority of the moon over the rest of the stars the scholars are the inheritors of the prophets for the prophets did not leave behind the nar nor the ham wealth rather they left behind beneficial knowledge so whoever takes it has taken a great share also the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam it was mentioned two men were mentioned before him one of them a worshiper and the other a scholar so the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the superiority of the scholar over the worshiper is like my superiority over the least of you then the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said indeed allah his angels the inhabitants of the heavens and the earth even the ant in its hole even the fish say salah upon the one who teaches the people to do good so over and over all the mentions and also the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions concerning the scholars also all the mentions in surah ali imran allah bears witness that none has the right to be worshiped but he and the angels and those have a knowledge so firstly allah bears witness and verily allah is sufficient as a witness and allah is the best and most perfect of witnesses allah is most truthful allah is most just 
Then Allah mentions the angels given witness and then Allah mentions the witness and the testimony of those having knowledge. This here is an honor and a favor from Allah that he gives to the people of knowledge over the rest of creation. Allah mentions in Surah Al-Fatir, it is only those who have knowledge among his slaves that fear Allah. Verily Allah is almighty, oft forgiven. Ali ibn Abi Talha, he mentioned that Ibn Abbas commented on this ayat concerning those, only those who have knowledge fear Allah. Ibn Abbas, he mentioned the one among his servants who knows about our Rahman is the one who does not associate anything in worship with him, the one who accepts as lawful that which he has permitted and accepts as unlawful that which he has prohibited. He obeys his commands and is certain that he will meet him and be brought to account for his deeds. Said ibn Jubayr, he said, fear is what stands between you and disobeying Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Hassan al-Basri. He said, the knowledgeable person is the one who fears our Rahman with regard to the unseen. Who likes that which Allah wants him to like and who shuns that which angers Allah. So they see the meaning, only those who have knowledge truly fear Allah, as he should be feared. Because the more they know about the Almighty, the All-Powerful, the All-Knowing, the King, the Master, the Owner of creation, who has the most perfect attributes and is described with the most wonderful and beautiful names, the more they will fear him. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah will not deprive you of knowledge after it has been given to you, but it will be taken away through the death of the scholars with their knowledge. Then there will remain ignorant people who when consulted will give verdicts according to their own opinions, whereby they will mislead others and go astray. So here we see one of the calamities that we can attest to is the death of the scholars. Because through this, Allah will remove knowledge, not by destroying the books, not by destroying YouTube and Google, not by destroying the different social media platforms where we can get some little knowledge, but Allah will remove this knowledge by the death of the scholars. May Allah guide us and may Allah protect us. Amin. La ilaha illallah wahdahu la shaykh alahu ahul mulk wa lahul hamd. وهو على كل شيء قدير Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala thumma amabad Thawban he narrated that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said there will never cease to be a group from my ummah manifest upon the truth 
they will not be harmed by those who forsake them until Allah's decree comes. Here, it goes without even saying, they say it refers to the scholars. They will never cease to be a group from my ummah manifest upon the truth. They will not be harmed by those who forsake them until Allah's decree comes. Who answers upon the truth if not for the scholars, the inheritors of the prophets, the ignorant, the misguided, the people of innovation, they attack Islam, they attack the Sunnah, they attack the straight path, they attack Salafia by attacking the scholars. Pay close attention here now, because without a doubt, we should know the level of the scholars. The level of the scholars is not as the layman. Those who know are not similar to those who do not know. So these people, the people of misguidance, they attack the scholars by saying they are scholars for dollars. The scholars don't know what is going on in other countries. The scholars, they don't care. The scholars, they are getting paid by the government. The scholars are puppets. The scholars are working, meaning that they're working for the CIA and these secret Western government security services. And the list goes on and on and on. They attack the scholars. The reality is that they attack the scholars in order to attack the straight path. Understand this and understand this clearly, brothers. It is not just simple and easy for them to come and attack Al Quran. It is not just simple and easy for them to come and attack a hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But they will attack the straight path by attacking the scholars. This is an old tactic. They used to do this in the time of the prophets and the messengers. They used to attack the prophets and the messengers and refer to them as madmen. They used to refer to them as the lowly ones because the poor people, they used to follow the prophets and the messengers. And they used to laugh at them because the wealthy and those who were well known in the community didn't used to follow them. So they used to mock and ridicule the prophets and the messengers. But we see that the scholars inherit the knowledge they inherit the deen from the prophets and the messengers. So likewise today, you will see people attacking the scholars, but not necessarily just attacking the scholars, they are attacking the truth. Because when you vilify someone, you will vilify that which is behind them, that which they are supporting. So this is the reality of people attacking the scholars. Without a doubt, we should have love, we should have honor and respect for the scholars because these are the people who Allah mentioned over and over concerning those who fear him, those who have knowledge of him, those who are raised up in to degrees due to them having knowledge. The scholars of Islam, they should not be ridiculed belittle or even disobey. When the scholars give advice, we should take the advice. Time and time again, the scholars advise. 
They even advised the brothers before they went to Syria to wage war. The scholars advised them, don't do that. It will cause more harm than good, as we see today. The scholars are the best from amongst mankind after the prophets and the messengers. The scholars are those whom Allah has favored and honored with inherited knowledge of the deen. We obey Allah and we obey his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam unconditional. When you hear Allah say and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say it's not about how you feel or if you understand you hear and you obey and we obey those in authority here referring to the scholars of Islam and disobedience of the scholars is a form of obedience to Allah we do not worship any scholar we do not place a scholar on a level that he is not befitting of. We do not place a scholar on a level that is only befitting for Allah. We do not worship any scholar, no matter how great their scholarship. We worship Allah alone upon the Sunnah, upon the way of the Salaf al we obey the scholars, but we do not blind follow them. And again, this obedience to the scholars is obedience to Allah. Again, Allah mentions, obey Allah, obey the messenger, and obey those in authority. Allah is commanding the believers, Ya ayuhaladzina amanu, atiullaha wa ati rasul. Obey Allah, obey the messenger and those in authority. And a piece of advice, and we should be from those who take advice. Again, we, we adhere to obedience to Allah and his messenger and we take advice from the scholars. Obey Allah, obey the messenger and those in authority. <coughs> And if you differ in anything amongst yourself, refer it to Allah and his messenger. Here sometimes as brothers, we may come into some disagreement. Even as husband and wife, we may come into some disagreement. Sometimes fitna may arise. So when you differ amongst yourself, Refer it to Allah and his messenger. Hear what it means as the Salaf mentioned. Return your affairs back to the scholars. Because they are the ones who know what Allah said. What the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. They are the ones who know the way of the Salaf for Salih. May Allah have mercy upon us and may Allah make us from those who place people in their rightful places. Again, we do not worship any scholar. May Allah make us from those who have love for the scholars, for the scholars are those from whom Allah loves. May Allah make us from those who bring forth righteous children who would encourage our children to go away and study and maybe someday become scholars. Ameen. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha ilanta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.